Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Oh, one moment. And... Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drakewing Gaming. Somebody me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Supernova, The Baron's Path. So y'all, let's just go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Merry Christmas Eve, this video is going up, I believe, on Christmas Eve, so I hope y'all have a great one. Uh, you guys are certainly going to be getting some Christmas videos, so no worries about that. <laughs> I'm always uh, pretty on time, pretty punctual with my video schedule, so let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you're up, and let's go. I believe we were doing some training. Okay. <clears throat> you can practice on your own if you'd like. Gil can help you. Otherwise, meet me here tomorrow, same time. Sure. Any updates on the stuff Greg mentioned about weapons or something? I'll be checking on that situation tonight. Is me participating still on the table? I don't see why not. It's valuable experience. But again, I'll first need to see what we're dealing with. Sounds good. You should practice flying, too. The area of the park above is perfect for that. We can see if Unbound can give you some pointers, too. That'd be nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> see you tomorrow, then. Yeah. See you later. Zoop! I linger in the training room, practicing some of the moves the rat showed me before eventually wandering back into the hallways. Nope. Nobody's around at this point. Gil tells me about a tunnel I can use to get into the heart of the city faster, so I drive home. That better not be me. Okay. The training on the next day goes like the one before, with my same inability to get Templar's mace in hand. We agree to meet again the next day. This time around, to do some flying. First in the training facilities, then above ground, like the Baron suggested. At least that goes reasonably well. By the time I'm done, I'm not quite ready to be zooming around the city, but I've at least managed to keep myself stable on the air. Turns out I'm not particularly afraid of heights, either. Clearing the treetops doesn't end up being much of an issue. Wednesday afternoon, I find myself on a long walk in the city, having rejected Jessica's invitation to hang out at the beach. I keep, pawing at my f I keep pawing at my phone in my jeans pocket. Maybe it's time to bite the bullet and follow the Baron's advice. It can't be worse than meeting Daniel at his father's funeral, after all. Uh, hi, Mrs. O'Connor. Oh, Nick! Good afternoon! Uh, good afternoon. Sorry about the sudden call. No need to apologize. Are you well? Yes, sorry. It's not an emergency or anything like that. Uh, to be honest, I hate to be bothering you like this. It's fine, Nick. You said you were free to con- I said you were free to contact me. Yeah, I know. What's wrong, dear? Nothing, really. I was just wondering if I could speak with Daniel. He can answer some questions for me. Yes, of course. When would you like to come by? I was hoping to chat with him today, actually. He'll be home late today, but you can catch him at the pub. How about to say? Yeah. Oof. Him, him, okay, talking to the guy who is very aggressive and standoffish around alcohol. That sounds like a wonderful idea. <laughs> He works there part-time. He should be at the wrestling practice right now, though. His shift starts at 5. That sounds good. I can meet him then. Where's the place? I will send you the location. Would you mind letting him know? I'd rather not catch him off guard, since... Yes, I will make sure he's aware, and that he'll behave. Mrs. O'Connor, there's no need for that. Don't worry about that. I hope he can answer whatever questions you have. Yeah, I hope so, too. Thank you. Are you well? I'm holding up. Thank you for asking, Nick. Of course. All right, I hope Danny can help you. I hope so, too. I'll be off. I've taken enough of your time as it is. Not at all. Goodbye. Bye, Mrs. O'Connor. Damn it. I really hate dragging them back into this so soon. Maybe I could have just waited, given them some space. And then again, Danny is the only one with the answers I need. The phone vibrates as I get a message with the location from Mrs. O'Connor. Huh. The pub isn't that far away from my parents' place. I should visit them after I'm done. It's been a while. But that's something to worry about later. Pubs are usually not my thing, and not just because I technically can't go to them yet, but the Merry Badger makes a good first impression. Nicer than most dive bars in the area, that's for sure. It's not much different inside, feeling kind of cozy. The wooden tables and chairs placed against exposed brick walls decorated with various signs. There's a space at the back wall where I assume a band would play live music in the evenings. It's, an, it's early on a weekday, so there's a, not a lot of people, which is fine by me. I come here to socialize, after all. I approach the red squirrel standing behind the bar, watching me with a curious expression. Hello there! Um... 
I'm about to say that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't seem right. Um, hello there. Uh, would you like to take a seat? He gestures at the bar stools arrayed in front of me. Hi. No, thanks. I'm actually looking for someone. Is Daniel here yet? Ah, are you a classmate of his? Nope. I see. Um, he's not here yet. I glance at my watch. I guess it's still a bit early. Would you mind if I wait for him here? Not at all. Can I get you something in the meantime? Uh, maybe just some lemonade? The squirrel nods, pouring me a glass while I take a seat. I pay them, then get to sipping the drink as I look around. It's around ten minutes before the bell at the door rings, and the badger I'm looking for steps through. It's a backpack slung around his shoulder, the end of a baseball bat sticking out, sticking out next to his head. Oh, shit. Sorry I'm late. Coach got a bit carried. Away. His voice trails off as he notices me sitting there. Hey, Daniel, did uh, Mrs. O'Connor mention I'd be coming here? He clenched his jaw and takes his phone out of his pocket. Mr. Call. Is everything all right, Danny? Yeah, can you give us a moment, Nate? We'll be out back. Oh, God. He throws the backpack onto one of the empty chairs. Follow me. I hop off the stool to follow the badger as he stalks down a hallway going deeper into the building. <laughs> Danny goes through the back door and out into a small courtyard. He rounds on me as I exit. The hell do you want? Hey, man, relax. I just have some questions. What questions? Can't say I'm surprised that he's being so snappish, but I was hoping Mrs. O'Connor talking with talking with him would have made this less well, like this. About the I look around to make sure nobody's around to overhear us and lower my voice. You know, the Templar stuff. Yeah, no shit. Of course you have questions. You shouldn't be wearing that at all. Come on, I didn't come here to argue. Don't give a damn. You have no you had no right to take the bracelet. It doesn't belong to you. It does. I wouldn't be able to wear it otherwise. It's not yours. Seriously, man. I'm not giving it up, and you can't take it from me. The badger clenches and unclenches his fists, breathing heavily. Then you can f leave. We've nothing to talk about. You can help me do better. You know why? You know way more about the bracelet than I do. Yeah, which is why you should give it back to me. It was never yours to begin with. The bracelet deemed me worthy. Why is that so hard to accept? Worthy? What, you think wearing it makes you a good person? Isn't that what it means? The others... Oh, is that what they told you? Well, too bad. It just means the bracelet knows you'll use it. Congrats, it doesn't think you're a coward. That doesn't make you a hero. What do you mean, use it? Then he rolls his eyes. Listen, raccoon, you're in over your head. You've no idea what you're doing. I do. You wanna die or something? Well, you can fucking help me not die! I can do that. You can- I can do that by taking the bracelet back from you. This is going in circles. Oh, I'm sympathetic. The badger is really starting to get on my nerves. I guess he has that Templar stubbornness that the Baron was talking about. Actually... Uh... Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna... Have that right there. Let's see. Uh... No, your father gave it to me. Are you really going to go against his wishes? Denny narrows his eyes, and for a second I feel that he might attack me, but in the end he just sighs and pushes past me. Don't talk to me about my father. If you're not going to give me the bracelet, then just leave. <laughs> I follow him back inside, feeling very frustrated with the badger, but knowing there's no point talking to him right now. Huh. Let's see. How did Templar know I'd be able to use the bracelet? Confusion flashes in Danny's eyes. You'd have gotten a feeling. What does that have to do with... Well, guess what, badger? Oh. I don't feel anything right now, so... Ah, shit! I don't feel anything... I don't feel anything right now, so maybe you wouldn't be able to do... You won't be able to... Danny moves faster than I have any chance to react. Pain explodes in my snout as his fist connects. I stumble backwards, hissing as I clutch my nose. I feel blood on my fingers. It doesn't follow up. Danny looks even more shocked than I am. I, I didn't mean to... Oh, screw this. As much as my fists are itching to return the favor, I know that would be the worst course of action right now. I turn around and storm down the hallway and across the pub towards the main exit. Is everything all right? Yes. Have a good day. I'm out the door before the squirrel can respond. What a waste of time. God damn it. Well, fuck this. I figure I'll figure it out on my own. Don't need some damn teenager to hold my hand. Okay, so yeah, that did not work out very well. I'll uh, try to reason with him. Ah, shit. Yeah, it seems like neither option is particularly great. Maybe I should have taken the Baron up on his offer to speak with him instead. Not that that would have changed anything. I have a feeling Danny won't listen to anyone right now. Thanks for all the help. 
Bye. Ah, screw you. I wave at the bartender as I head to the exit. Thanks for the lemonade. Have a good day. Uh, you too. What a waste of time. God damn it. Well, fuck this. I'll figure it out on my own. I don't need some damn teenager to hold my hand. The Baron did better. The Baron better follow through with his promise to take me on a job soon, because I really need to blow off some steam. Oh, what's up? Enter. Ooh, the champion. Okay. Uh, right, let's pause this right here. So, okay. All right, let's go forward. All right, the champion. Would you like to skip? No. Read the interlude. Yeah, let's do the interlude. More content. The champion. All right, so it appears we are all caught up with the content for uh, Supernova, so we're going into the interlude. Okay, the heavy door lets out a shrill sound as the guard swings it open for me. With the main entrance closed for the night, I pay my visit from a side alley. The guard swings his submachine gun like an idiot as he scans my face. At least his buddy, currently standing off to the side and observing me, seems to have a good trigger discipline. The boss is waiting for you upstairs. He points to the elevator down the hall. Top floor. I, he gets a nod in response. I can feel their eyes on my back as I press the button. I hate these things. It always feels like I'm stepping into a trap. Even though I know I can bash my way out of here, it puts me on edge. Worse than usual. Of course there's a camera staring at me from the corner. I stare right back, counting the seconds until the elevator finally goes up to my destination. I'm greeted by two more guards as I step into the hallway. Wonder how many more station I many wonder how many are stationed across the building. With how tall it is, the main concern would be guarding the elevator shafts. Unless your enemies can fly. Up on the roof. Gar I guess the bull isn't concerned about that, or if he has more tricks up his sleeve to ensure his safety. Gotta keep an eye out. What's my host do what's my host doing up there anyway? Oh, hello there. The bull is across from me, speaking to some woman I don't know. Well, he is the one I came to talk with. It's the rest of the people on the roof that draw my eye. The man leaning against the wall to my right with his arms crossed at his chest. He was there the last time, too, and like before, the tiger is dressed like the guards from downstairs, but he's not visibly armed. My presence only elicits a raised eyebrow before he goes back to looking bored, his posture completely relaxed. Meanwhile, off to the side, at the edge of the building, another man, a zebra, is tied to the to a chair and gagged. Oh lord, oh lord. The only thing separating him from a very long fall is the waist-high concrete. What the hell did I just walk into? There's clearly some kind of meeting, so I hang back, waiting for it to be concluded. This has nothing to do with me. If that doesn't last, as soon as the bull spots me, he waves at me to approach. So I do, making sure my back's not to the tiger. Not about to have him out of my sight. Damn. Looky here, my favorite wolf. <sighs> Mr. Norton. Oh, wow. Who's he? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. He is... Mm -hmm. Is he the wolf from the beginning? The one who killed Templar? Uh, I can't remember. I don't think so. One of your men? Ha! I wish! What do you say, Megaton? The offer's still wide open. Don't call me that. You've got to loosen up, boy. It's, it's a great name. But... If you don't like it, I have some more suggestions. No need. Yeah, fine. Wait, where are my manners? Lady Zhao, this is... It doesn't matter. I'll let you get back to your meeting. Nonsense! I've got something... I've got nothing to hide here. Not from you two, anyway. Isn't that right, Earl? The last one is apparently addre addressed at Zebra, who tries to shout something muffled in response. Huh! <laughs> Fucking moron! I'm gonna deal with you real soon, don't you worry! Can I ask what is happening here? I'm wondering the same, lady. Oh, what? Him? Yeah, Lady Zal, as I have been telling you, I recently concluded a very interesting business deal. And this, and this here absolute genius decided that, after 15 years of working for me, 15 years Ride showed nothing but goodwill, by the way, he'd run off and sell me out. Can you fucking believe it? Ride to the Northern Syndicate, and he thought I wouldn't find out. There's another round of muffled shouting. I'm guessing the zebra is trying to dispute the account. Seems like his side of the story will remain untold. This deal, it is connected to why you called me here. Oh yes, you see, this fella who calls himself the Arbiter has provided me with some truly unique weapons. Next level stuff, energy beams, lasers, the works. 
Don't know where he got him, but he has more to sell, and we have an exclusive agreement. He sounds like a small kid excited about a new Christmas toy. For the likes of him, that's exactly what it is. I slowly unclench my fist, conscious of the tiger's gaze. This is not why I'm here. I see. Happy for you, Norton. Ha! And I think you'll be a little more excited when I show you these babies in action. And of course, I'm offering you a slice of the cake, Lady Zhao. You've been my most valuable partner, after all. The red panda raises her eyebrows in apparent surprise. Am I the only one to receive this offer? I would have considered inviting old Jimmy, too, but since he decided to hire my men out from under me... I see. Besides, the Northern Syndicate is clearly up to something. My sources tell me they've been messing with the occult. I expect to be hearing so much about what's going on in the criminal underworld of Nova City tonight. At least it's good to know that the scum is not entirely getting along. The Red Panda is probably some higher up in the drug operation I know has been causing a headache for the police in recent years. We could decapitate two criminal enterprises right here and now. That's not my fight. Not that it would matter anyway. Kill one bastard, another comes along to take their place. A cult? Yup! Who knows what shit they're trying to pull with that? Apparently, Jimmy required some magical trinket recently. But not to worry, he'll be relieved of it soon. What does it do? Norton shrugs. Makes magic easier to use at a distance or something, the way it was explained to me. The response makes me blink, my ears perking up. This could be something we need. Oh, he has someone who can use it? Wouldn't be surprised. You sent your men to steal it? Not quite. I hired a mage to do it for me, this funny little Martin. Oh, ho, ho, ho. well then, okay. We know who that is. With the intent to delve into the occult yourself? Ha! Not at all! I wouldn't trust their ilk as far as I can throw them. Although, to be fair, I could throw this Martin pretty far. He laughs at his, he laughs at his own joke while Zal stares off across the city, her expression thoughtful. I have to think fast on how to approach this. It could be nothing, for all I know. Not, not, not something I'm going to waste my own time pursuing. But if Norton is right, you trust him to bring it back for you. He'll want his payment, no? Not like I care about the object anyway, he can have it. Give it to me. Oh, didn't realize you had an interest in magic. I stay quiet, knowing I can't come up with, the, with a believable story to justify my request. Luckily, that seems good enough for the bull. Huh, you know what? Sure, we'll call it a favor and you'll owe me. Those words make me grind my teeth, but I nod. Whatever keeps him happy, for now. Regardless, Jonathan, 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 we have no need of extra arms. Although your offer is much appreciated. Syndicate might be gunning for me right now, but that doesn't mean they'll ignore you for long, Zal. I don't see why. We have no rivalry. And that's why I like you. No grasping for things beyond your reach. You mean because she doesn't challenge you? Norton is very used to being at the top. He's been there for a long time. It's not just Jimmy, anyway. The supers are growing more and more brazen. We need measures to protect ourselves. Are your current measures not enough? Alright, guys and gals, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. This is really interesting. Got some new characters. Pretty cool. Hmm. Can't wait to find out more about this. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. If you're super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Merry Christmas Eve and happy holidays, guys and gals. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!